שלום חברים, עשה שלום, אבל זה אין שלום. I say peace, my friends, but there is no peace. And, um, but anyway, let's go right into this video here. Um, the title of the video, Shimon Perez Matches Bible Prophecy, is maybe a little bit, um, it's not the heart of the message, but the thing is, is I want to bring out to you more so about the two witnesses and the things that are taking place on the earth today what God will do, um, and yet to try to straighten out all the false doctrines that are going on about the two witnesses. Now, in some respect, we might say that the two witnesses and the identity of the two witnesses does not really matter. And no doubt, as far as for the salvation purposes, it does not matter. But then again, if we look at the fact of all kinds of doctrines that go on that are not of God, uh, I, I suppose then it does become an issue. And um, I remember when I did a video a little while back about challenging the people about uh, the spirit of Elijah that would come. Uh, I had a lot of uh, different thoughts that were thrown towards me there, some that I'm aware of, some um, I had not heard before, but one in particular that kind of caught my attention was a man did a video and the, um, uh, the brother will say uh, that did this video here, he was respectful in the way he, uh, he approached it, but he challenged me in saying that uh, when it come right down to it, that, he, that, that John the Baptist had fulfilled these scriptures uh, about uh, the coming of Elijah for a future event. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to address uh, in, a, in a roundabout way throughout this video, th his comments there saying that John the Baptist had fulfilled that will be addressed. Uh, but there is hundreds and hundreds of uh, opinions that have, that have come on the video with Chuck Missler. Uh, and I'm hoping that the people that have watched have been like 80,000 or so, or maybe 90,000 views on this video. Um, about the two witnesses. I'm hoping that those that have made those comments that somehow or another that they will actually be able to see this video here and maybe it will help put things in their proper perspective. And, um, and we have to realize, many of us do, that history repeats itself and this is what we're, we're looking at. Um, now the one person that did, that did the video criticizing what I had said uh, use the word incarnation uh, in no I do not believe in reincarnation uh, but let's let's just say this real quick here before we get into the whole subject here that when the scripture says about Elisha when the prophets in Jericho saw Elijah Elisha coming back and he put the mantle on the river Jordan and the waters did part they said does not the spirit of Elijah rest upon Elisha now, when we say the spirit of Elijah, what really is the spirit of Elijah? It's the Holy Spirit that was anointing Elijah to do the things that he did. And so therefore, what really is it? It's not that Elijah has incarnated Elisha, but rather it's the same spirit of God, the Ruach ha ha HaKadosh, that has come upon Elisha to do the things that Elisha, Elijah did when he was here on earth. Same thing with John the Baptist. When, uh, when the spirit of Elijah come upon him, it was not the spirit of Elijah per se, but the, spirit, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God himself that was upon him, the same maybe portion of spirit of the Holy Spirit that was upon Elijah that made him act the way he did came upon John the Baptist. Now we're going to get into all that. But let's go though, the reason for the title though, I want to take you back, and I think you're going to find some things that are going to shock you, but let's deal with the title of the video. Ahab, or excuse me, Shimon Perez um, uh, matches Bible prophecy. Interesting video, or, uh, or title, I should say. But uh, let's take a look at the reason why I chose this title here. Uh, and, and maybe I haven't actually done the title as, a, as you see me speaking here, so I might tweak that a little bit uh, and put on there Ahab. Uh, 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 fulfilling uh, biblical prophecies. Um, but anyway, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 21 and verse 21. Let's begin right there. 
Uh, Behold, I will bring evil upon thee and will take away thy posterity and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of uh, Ahiah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city of the dog shall eat, and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. And he did very abominably in the following idols, according to all things, as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard those words, that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, and that's Eliyahu for my Jewish brothers, Seest thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me, because he humbleth himself before me? I will not bring the evil in, the, in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. Shimon Perez, you are that son of Ahab fulfilling the biblical prophecy that is written here in 1 Kings chapter 21 and i know that's a hard thing to say but we're going to get into the two witnesses we're going to understand what they come for who they are and why they come um let's quickly i want to show you because you are on the door right at the very door of tribulation itself and i want to show you something that by God's grace, I believe he showed me, that lets you know the hour that you're living in. And let's take and go to chapter 16 of 1 Kings, and just look at this right here. Let's begin with uh, verse 30. This is where Ahab, God is in, in verse uh, chapter 16, God goes to the lineage here of the kings and the evil that is going on in Israel from the time uh, of Solomon's passing and, and how the different ones have taken over and the, and, the, and the conflicts. But we get into here to verse 30. It's when it speaks about Ahab and says, And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass as it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of, uh, of the Z uh, Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. In his days did Chael the Bethelite build Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Ibram, his firstborn. In other words, his firstborn died as a result of the prophecy of uh, Yahshua uh, ben Nun. But anyway, it says, uh, And Ibram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof, and the youngest son, uh, Sigub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Joshua, the son of Nun. Now, before I read the next verse, keep in mind what he's doing here or, or, or what this is saying, or just so you know the, little, the, the thing about uh, uh, Jericho. Uh, Joshua had said when the city was destroyed, Cursed be the man and his firstborn who builds back this city. And so it's kind of ironic that they were foolish enough to lay the walls and foundations again, but they did it anyway. Notice, though, verse 7, chapter 17, verse 1, what happens next. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was, in, was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And tribulation set in in those days upon Israel 
Why? What for? Because Ahab had married Jezebel and brought idolatry into Israel. This is exactly what Shimon Perez is doing as a son of Ahab. He has gone to the Vatican to marry up with Jezebel and to bring idolatry into Israel. Now, interestingly enough, for those of you that don't know this, Jezebel, you know, she's the daughter of Ethbel, uh, uh, the king of the Zidonians. Historically speaking, they worship the sun god and also a goddess. I forget the name of that goddess. God forgive me. I should have meant to write that down, but I forgot to. But just look it up and everything, the Zidonians. If you look up the Zidonians, you'll find out that they worship a goddess and, of course, the sun god. And uh, many of you know that that is also the way the Vatican does. They, they make marry their goddess. And, of course, they do the sun god worship as well. And I know I mentioned about the moon god. Well, one day, I'll, by God's grace, I'll try to get in here and separate the two of those so you understand what that's about. But, the, but what is this? God brings judgment upon the earth here as a result of what Ahab did. And that was to marry Jezebel. Uh, and then we're going to get into this as we go here. Now, let's kind of set the stage here. Um, let's go then to the Christian text of um, Revelation 11, because we're going to talk about the two witnesses and we want to understand who they are. And then we're going to get into the identity of the two witnesses. Um, and also, too, by the way, as I get into this, I do want to share with you something. There is, uh, I, I do not recall his name, but on my Facebook page, there is a, a man that uh, posted an article there about, um, um, he had said, and maybe, no, I won't be able to do it in this video here, uh, maybe if I can remember to post uh, his name on there, or at least the article, you can see that. Uh, this man, uh, actually at one time, he stood for Israel as being born a nation, and then he said after two or three years of Torah study, uh, he has had, since then had a change of mind that Israel being born in 1948 is actually not uh, of God. And in the process of this video here, and I will actually post this video as part of the comment place in, 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 the, in the box there for his comments. There have been many, many, many people comment and many people in support of his theory. Um, and, and here's the concern that I have when we look at this here um, with, with him being against Israel being a nation now. You have to understand the secular nation of Israel is in place in order to be an umbrella, so to speak, for the remnant of Israel that is there. Uh, I would say also the building of the third temple that will be, that will be spearheaded by the Vatican, uh, I am not for that. That is true. I'm not for that. Plainly, God speaks about a third temple coming down out of heaven. Uh, we know that. But nonetheless, God also says in his word that he would gather Israel from all the nations, whether he has scattered them, and bring them back into their homeland. Now, we're there now as a nation. He said we would dwell there as, an, as a people with a city without walls. Uh, because there's so many there, and truly uh, Israel is fulfilling that as well. He said both the house of Israel and the house of Judah would dwell again once in safety. Uh, and these prophecies are made when the house of Israel had already been scattered for, for quite, a, quite a number of years. Uh, so we are there in our homeland, but he uses a lot of the scriptures to talk about how that the peace would come and, you know, uh, you know because of Moshiach coming. You can't misplace scripture, and that's what's happened in, in, in the where this brother has gone to. But my concern for him, and for those that believe in such nonsense here, is that you're borderlining blasphemy. Because blasphemy is to call the works of God an unclean thing. So for God to gather the children of Israel back into their homeland, and for you to say that that is not of God, you are calling the very work of Almighty God unclean. And that, my friend, is blasphemy. So the seriousness of, uh, of the accusations there is just, is just tremendous. Anyway, let's get into the two witnesses. 
And there was given me, uh, chapter Revelation chapter 11, there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of uh, of the earth and if, if if any man will hurt them fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies and if any man will hurt them he must in this manner be killed these have power to shut heavens that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, which also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people of the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there an earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Now, my friends, Let's settle a couple of issues real quick just from the very reading of Revelation chapter 11 right here, at least the verses uh, 1 to verse 14 here. One, their dead bodies, they're killed and their dead bodies lay in that street there and it's kind of interesting, they call it Sodom and Egypt because it is an ungodly area right outside the Damascus Gate in Jerusalem there. And also because it is a Palestinian area, so it is like a modern-day Egypt. It is a Muslim-controlled area, or, or an Arabic-controlled area, we might say there. Um, but they're killed. They are men. They die. They lay in the street. They are raised up from the dead. The remnant, which is the 144,000, they are, are, are fearful, but yet, at the same time, we see that... Um, um, Let's look at that one more time real quick. And uh, uh, But they give glory to the, to the God of heaven. Why? Because redemption for them is soon at hand. Now, also we see that fire proceeds from their mouth, kills their enemies. Uh, it rains not in the days of their ministry. Now, both of those there are part of Elijah's ministry. It's the way he dealt. Remember the 50 soldiers that came down and he said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down and, and, and destroy you. And uh, and, and that happened twice, and on the third time that, it, that the, that the uh, captain that came down, he had a little bit more respect and recognized that this was truly a man of God. And uh, uh, also the closing of, of, the, of the heavens. Now remember, why does that happen? Notice this here, friends. Notice this carefully. When I read to you over here about Ahab marrying Jezebel, bringing idolatry into Israel in 1 Kings, then immediately Elijah comes on the scene and as a result of that marriage, that covenant that Ahab made, God closes up the heavens and it doesn't rain. Now here we have right here, immediately at the time, as we see there's, there's a temple that's being built. They're measuring it. They're leaving out the outer court because it's given to the Gentiles. Why, why is it given to the Gentiles? What, what did Ahab do? He built the groves. He built an altar for Baal. And here we have Shimon Perez just went to the Vatican here, what, a month ago? And making all these concessions with the Vatican, marrying, he's courting Jezebel. But when the hour comes that he marries Jezebel, they'll begin the building of the third temple. And the Gentiles will be given... 
the outer court. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. That's Jezebel. She'll be given a place just as Ahab built an altar for Baal. My God, people, do you ever, do you ever realize when you, when you say the name Baal or Baalim? It's husbands. I mean, that's in other words, you know, I mean, if you, if a Baal, where's your husband? In modern Hebrew, that's the, the term used. But in this case here, it's husbands. Why? Because they have more than one God. Not satisfied with, with uh, Shema Yisrael Adonai Leheinu Adonai Hechad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. And for the Jewish people, you're not going to give us two gods, and you're not going to give us three gods. We're not going to take it. But the thing is, then, me, Yeshua, who is Jesus? Yeshua, who Elohim? Did not John say in the... When, uh, in, you know, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Not like the Watchtower people say, uh, well, you know, there is a definite article that's there, and uh, that is, uh, he is a God. There's no such thing in the Greek language. And yet they come and they knock on your door and you believe such nonsense? Don't believe their lies. They make two gods out of it. And a good Trinitarian believer knows that there's one God, but he manifests himself in more than one way. Jews know that. We know that God came down and manifested himself before Moses. We also know that he actually was showed his, the backside of a man, and yet the word of God tells us that he's invisible. A spirit which cannot be seen. So what was the revelation that John had? John saw, he says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. What was the Word? The first Word that come out of Almighty God's mouth, Ve'yomad Elohim Yahior. God making, make, making Himself materialized as the light in the dimension that we live in in order to be able to have fellowship with us. Then I have to ask you, who is the tree of life? We kind of get off on that, but I, I really don't want to get off on that. Let, let, me, let me kind of stay focused with you here. So we have these two witnesses, and the other one turns the water to blood. Now, clearly, John identifies the two witnesses as the two olive trees. He's speaking back in Zechariah, which are the two anointed ones, because we know what Zechariah says about that. You know, they're the two anointed ones. Son of man, you know, what are, you know, yes, what be these two, uh, uh, these two candlesticks? And the angel said, these are the anointed one to stand before the presence of the Lord, see? So they come. Now John's identifying who they are and what they're doing and why, when they're coming. They're coming at a time when the temple is going to be built. And according to um, in, in 1 Kings, we also find Elijah comes on the scene when Ahab marries Jezebel. So there has to be a marriage with Jezebel, and Jezebel is nothing more or nothing less than a type of the Vatican. What, what, what does the revelation say about the great whore? It says she has daughters. They make an image into the beast. Who can make war with her? And the churches have done so. They've made an image into the beast. You know, friends, I mean, this is very deep. It's very deep, no doubt about it. But I know that there is many that believe that Enoch is, is, the, um, is one of the two witnesses. They'll say Elijah and Enoch. Let, let's look at that, though. One, we don't see Enoch never had this. No, there's no scripture that records that Enoch had th these gifts here. Um, I know that uh, Chuck made the comment. He said, well, Enoch's not Jewish. And God's going to send his own to him. And I agree with that. But 
Enoch, my friend, is a type of the raptured bride of Christ. So if he comes back and dies, you take away that type. Now, what I find fascinating, and there's so many people, there's literally hundreds of comments on the video with Chuck Messler that, that were me and him. We actually were talking about the Sea of Reeds, but we get into that subject about the two witnesses that are coming. And many of the people on there, their argument over and over and over is it has to be Enoch because Enoch did not die. Elijah did not die, and they have to come back because the Bible says it's appointed a man once to die. Now, I'm not a Greek scholar, but I have gone back into there to look at that appointed. It does not mean that you absolutely, if you haven't died, you're going to have to come back and die. Here's why I say that. Do you realize how many people that hold that doctrine and believe that based on that scripture also believe in a pre-tribulation rapture? And quoting the very scripture where Paul says, we shall not all sleep, but the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which remain alive shall be caught up together with them. You know, what is that? First Thessalonians, I believe, something like that. They believe in... It's fascinating. They believe in the rapture of the bride. So when then does the bride have to come back and die? If you're going to take and say that Enoch has to be one of the two witnesses because it's appointed a man who wants to die and he absolutely has to come back and die, then the bride then has to come back and die as well. When? Now this is for all of you that hold the idea that it has to be Enoch because of that scripture. See, see You see where you kind of get yourself at? You get yourself into a situation that doesn't match the Word of God. Enoch is a type of the raptured saints. Noah is a type of the tribulation saints. Noah is a type of the church that goes into tribulation. So if Enoch types the raptured saints, then how can we sit there and say that he has to die? So, and secondly, it doesn't match the Word of God. Now, because we're dealing with the issue of of Moses or Enoch. Let, let me just share with you. Gosh.